All right, I'm recording. And I just wanted to give you folks a heads up, those that have CO2 and use a drop checker. Uh, this type of drop checker. It can be a pain in the butt to get the liquid to, through to the little orb there and then turn it around. So what I did was go on eBay or whatever site you would like to go and buy these uh, for uh, printer cartridges, ink, inkjet cartridges to fill a cartridge. You'll find them there. And I bent this one. They're easy to bend. You can bend any shape you want. And you just take off this little rubber protection here and you fill up the amount of liquid you want to put in and just press and you're in one, two, three. No shaking it back and hitting it with your fingers. You just put whatever you want, suck out of the bottle, put whatever you need, and that's that. So that's one tip for you. The other thing for those that have a, a zoo drop checker, and it looks like this, uh, you may find out that it leaks. The rubber gasket is lousy stinko. So what I did was use a little crazy glue all around the lip and close it up and wait a little bit and you got a perfect seal. So how do you get the liquid in after the seal? The same thing. You use one of these printer inkjet uh, hypodermic needles. Pull the liquid you want. You can go right in there drop what you need to drop, turn it around, there you go, and it's full. Now, the other thing about these, it's very hard to read in my tank with a floodlight. So what I did was, got a can of spray paint. This is white plastic spray paint. You can get at a hardware store. And just give it a shot on the back of it, the side that you're not viewing. So when you do look through it, you'll get a true reading of the color. The white background will show the color, whether it's uh, green or yellow. Yellow would be too much CO2. So there you go. Two hints on the drop checkers. I'm really adding to society here. Okay? All right.